What's going on guys, CTA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be taking a quick look at this five inch LCD display that I picked up for my Raspberry Pi 4. I got a little handheld project coming up on the Raspberry Pi 4 and I've been looking for a decent screen. And while this doesn't hit all the marks that I wanted, it was cheap enough to pick up and I figured we'd take a quick look at it. A lot of you might have noticed that this doesn't have an HDMI port on it. That's because this is not an HDMI display. This is a DSi display to work from the DSi connector on a Raspberry Pi 2. 3, 3D Plus, and the Raspberry Pi 4. Unfortunately, this display is not an IPS display, so I'm guessing that viewing angles aren't going to be great on here, but for a handheld, it should be perfect. I'm always looking straight on at my handheld anyway. You can actually pick this screen up on Amazon for around 45 bucks. They have two different models. You can get just the screen or the screen with an acrylic case, and I opted for the screen with the case. One thing I love about these newer screens coming out for the Raspberry Pi is they don't require a driver whatsoever. You don't have to do any setup. This will work with Raspbian, Ubuntu Mate, and it'll even work with RetroPie without changing anything in the configuration file. So in this video, I'm just going to do a quick assembly, and I really wanted to take a look at how this thing performs myself. Like I mentioned, the screen will work with the Raspberry Pi 2, the 3, the 3B+, and the Raspberry Pi 4. But in my case, I wanted to use a Raspberry Pi 4. So I have a slimmed down version to fit inside of my little handheld that I've been working on for a couple weeks. As you can see, two of the USB ports, the Ethernet, and the GPIO have been removed. And I had this done by one of my good buddies over at Akuma Mods. I'll leave a link to his store in the description in case you want to get something like this done. Overall, the build quality on the screen itself is really nice. It doesn't feel cheap at all. It's got a nice PCB on the back. The screen is plastic. Unfortunately, it's not glass, but that's what I get when I'm paying $40 for a screen. Now, if you're looking for an IPS screen just like this, Waveshare does make one, but they're not readily available in the States yet. I did order one, but it's going to be a couple weeks shipping from China, and we'll take a look at that when I get it. But this is going to be kind of a placeholder, and I really wanted to get started on this, and I figured it might be worth the $40 investment. Assembly on this screen is very self-explanatory, and they also offer instructions, but basically the Raspberry Pi is going to bolt to the back of the screen itself. We'll have the DSi ribbon go from the screen to the Raspberry Pi's DSi port, and since I ordered the case with it, I figured I'd go ahead and put this together real quick. It's very easy to do, it's just a stacking acrylic case, and they send you all the hardware you need to get this mounted up. So now that I have the case assembled, it's time to mount the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm just going to turn it over here. First thing I want to do is insert my DSi ribbon on the screen itself. Blue is going to face outwards on the screen. And now that I have that in place, I'll just throw the Raspberry Pi on top of here. I'm just going to mount it down with two screws that'll hold it for now. And I'll insert the DSi ribbon to the DSi connector on the Raspberry Pi 4. Make sure everything's locked down. You can actually tuck this ribbon in here to get it out of the way. And it sits on here nicely. I think it looks really good, especially with that slimmed down Pi 4. No driver is required whatsoever. All you need to do is flash an image and install your SD card. So I've just installed the latest Raspbian image to a 32 gigabyte SD card. As long as you got that DSi connector plugged in correctly, you should get a picture and touchscreen functionality. And there we have it. Now you could connect a mouse to this and have a mini PC if you want, but the touch screen does work. But overall, I mean, a lot of these operating systems for the Raspberry Pi just aren't optimized for touch screen displays. It does work, but sometimes you'll be tapping on that X button a couple times just to get it to close down. I'll just go ahead and open up the browser real quick. And I forgot to connect to Wi-Fi, but that's okay. I mean, you can see that the screen's working. I don't notice any screen tearing at all, but I haven't done any extensive video testing yet. And the viewing angles really aren't that bad. It's not the best that I've seen, but it's not the worst either. This little touch screen would be perfect for something like Volumeo. Pair the Raspberry Pi 4 with a decent DAC and you have a nice little touch screen interface so you can play all your audio over your home speakers. Or you could just put together a tiny PC with something like this, but I'm really interested to see how RetroPie performs with this screen. I know it's going to work out of the box, I have everything connected correctly, but I want to make sure I don't have any screen tearing or any craziness going on. So I've installed the RetroPie beta for the Raspberry Pi 4, and I will have a video coming up on that really soon, so stay tuned to the channel. So far, it's looking pretty good. And the resolution and DPI on the screen is actually really good. I can actually read this text from a couple feet away. I've tested screens in the past where I couldn't make out anything in terminal.
So there we have it, RetroPie up and running on the Raspberry Pi 4 with this 5-inch screen here. Touch is not going to work inside of RetroPie. There's nothing programmed for touch, so you will have to use an external controller. I'm just using a wireless Bluetooth controller here, and I'm going to go into some PlayStation 1 and test out Tekken 3 real quick. I just had to turn the on-screen FPS on so we could take a look at that. But so far, so good. It's looking pretty decent. We do need to get into some fast-paced gaming just to see if we have any screen tearing. I don't think we will with this DSi connection. Yes, it is true that older versions of the Raspberry Pi did suck with DSi displays, but over the years, the Raspberry Pi Foundation has updated the firmware drivers for the DSi connection, and it's been really nice the past year or so. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm not seeing any screen tearing or really crazy low frame rates. Now, I do have the FPS counter on screen. That doesn't really count. You kind of really got to look at the screen itself. But the way it looks right now, performance is pretty good, even with RetroPie. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. It's a decent screen. I really do wish it was an IPS display, but that's kind of what I get when I'm in a hurry. I will have a review on a 5-inch IPS display coming up in the next few weeks, so keep an eye on the channel. But overall, I do like the form factor of this, especially paired with this slimmed-down Raspberry Pi 4 and the case off of it. I think it's going to be perfect for a little handheld build. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.